Hello and welcome to Alpha Military TV. Thanks very much for tuning in once again and seeing what we're up to. My name is Richard Saunders. Now some of you have asked how you can support the channel and the best and the easiest way to be honest is simply to hit the subscribe button and if you like what you see to give us a like. But you can also buy us a coffee. The details are down below. Now the rifle we have on the bench today this is quite a moment for the channel because today is September the 1st 2022 and that is launch day for this particular rifle. It is the BSA R12 CLX Pro and it is a thing of beauty as I'm sure you'll agree. Now do not make the, make the assumption that this is an R10TH with a side lever. That is not the case. Granted it looks similar to the, uh, the BSA R10TH um, with this thumb hole stock and all the rest of it but all of the components um, just about oh, sorry just about all of the components um, bar the uh, the trigger and the trigger guard are completely new compared to the R10 um, yeah, there's a new regulator obviously a side lever action new magazine new safety catch lots of things are brand new on this um, now that's not to say that in looking at this you won't recognize some of the components from the BSA Ultra CLX which was launched not so long ago um, as, and especially the 160th anniversary edition which trialed this side lever uh, platform for BSA but yeah that's only to be expected because a company isn't going to make a, uni a unique set of tools for every single rifle in its range but compared to the R10TH you know this is looks similar but it's completely different now this rifle was designed developed and manufactured in Birmingham in the UK and it was the focus of as you might expect some some serious testing just to give you an example BSA tell me that the the new regulator inside was um, subjected to a 100,000 continuous shots uh, testing program using an automatic automatic machine um, and it stood up to that as you would uh, as you would expect you now which is and I think that's just indicative of the amount of time and testing that's gone into this rifle um, as I said before, any of the, the trigger and the trigger guard are the same with the, um, with the R10TH and most importantly for R10 lovers, it has a brand new in-house developed regulator. Now before we get on to talk about the main features on the rifle like we usually do, <clears throat> just to give you a sense of sort of the background to this rifle and some of the bare statistics. There are two versions, there's the carbine which is a little bit longer than this and the super carbine which is this rifle. Now the carbine rifle is uh, 40 inches long from muzzle to butt, uh, so it's uh, 102 centimeters, and weighs 8.3 or 8.4 pounds. Has a 15.5 inch or, three, or 390 mil barrel, and two, two for 12 foot pounds, you can expect about 280 shots to a fill, 177 at 12 foot pounds, about 250 shots to a fill. Now the super carbine, which is this rifle, is a little bit shorter, 37 inches um, or 940 millimeters long, has a slightly shorter barrel, 12 and a half inch barrel or 320 millimeter barrel, um, and it weighs 7.9 stroke eight pounds. And in terms of shot count at 12 foot pounds, you're looking at 190 shots in 177 and 260 shots in 22. Now the reason why I gave you those two slightly different um, weight figures for, for each version of this rifle is that it's available, each rifle is available in this beautiful walnut stock or a black pepper laminate stock, both designed by Manelli of Italy. They both look exactly the same and have the same features. They're just, you know, one is walnut, one is black pepper laminate. Now the black pepper laminate will cost you £1,265 and this walnut version will cost you £1,215. Um, which is great value for money you know it's a beautiful looking rifle and um, having had it for some weeks now to test it and shoot it it shoots every bit as good as it looks so what we're going to do is we're going to run through the features from back to front as we usually do then we'll take it down the range or probably down to one of my permissions and give it a shoot so key features then well having just banged on about how different this is to the R10TH I'm going to point out a couple of similarities now um, and that predominantly exists around the back end of the stock. Now, as you can hopefully see, there's a curved section to the um, to the shoulder pad just here, which, if you slacken off a, a screw in the middle, will enable you to move that curved part up and down. 
to, to, to give, you, give you good shoulder fit. And then if you take that off completely, you can access this center part. And again, another couple of screws allow you to put some angle into that as well. Um, and then on top, you obviously have this adjustable cheek piece, which is finished in a black soft touch. And the combination of the adjustability in the shoulder pad and the cheek piece gives you good shoulder fit, gives you good cheek weld and good alignment for a scope. Now, <clears throat> some people are gonna complain about the fact that this cheek piece is, uh, is not another piece of walnut or another piece of black pepper laminate. Um, and because they're gonna want the shoulder, the, the cheek piece to match the grain of the rifle and all of that good stuff. You know, and I can understand that argument, but look, the reality is that to take a stock, to cut out the cheek piece, to send the cheek piece off somewhere else to have all of the, the fittings made for that to make it adjustable, and then send the rest of the stock off somewhere else to have other work done on that, and then have those two components come back together and match up again, you know, it's just massively complicated from a manufacturing process. And, and to, to do that would probably not only put the price up on the rifle, but also put production, make production times longer. Um, it's just not practicable. And I really like the fact that rather than just plonking another piece of, 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 of walnut in here, um, or black pepper laminate in here, BSA have put this black um, soft touch in here which I think looks really, really good because it matches up with the, the black part of the, uh, the shoulder pad uh, and obviously with all the metal work as well. So I don't have a problem with this whatsoever. Now you get a couple of, uh, of sling stud swivels or sling studs in here for you to put either a bipod on the front or obviously a sling or, or both. And then you have a, a nice large cutout here um, to, uh, to put your hand through to address the, uh, the pistol grip. And the pistol grip itself has no finger contours on the front of it. It does have a, a little shelf up here, both sides. Now, as I say, this rifle is ambidextrous, uh, which makes it very, very comfortable to shoot. And you can shoot this with a thumb up grip as, as much as you can shoot it with a, with a thumb, with a, a wraparound grip. Uh, it has a couple of sections of almost like fishtail checkering on the pistol grip in two sections. And there's a little Minelli logo there as well. And then at the bottom, of the pistol grip. Now I don't know whether this is just the same wood that stained a different colour or whether this actually is rosewood, but you have a darker cap to the uh, to the pistol grip which has a lighter brown spacer and that looks really really tasteful. The The safety catch is mounted at the top at the rear here um, and is a new feature on this rifle. You, in the central position the rifle is, um, is safe and then you push it across to make the rifle live. And just in the middle here, there's a little red dot that is exposed when the rifle is uh, in the live position. Um, nice and far away from the trigger, which I like. And you can also operate it completely silent, silently as well. It doesn't come on when you cock the rifle and it is uh, resettable as well. Now the side lever is obviously the ma a main component for this, for this rifle and it's sprung for the first stage. And then you pull it back a second stage to cock the rifle and then push it forward. And this drop down handle here um, rotates, so which is really good. So when you're pulling it back, it kind of rotates with your finger, which is a nice touch. And that uh, side lever drives a, a stainless steel pellet probe um, through the block um, and through the magazine. And the magazine is a new, is the new style um, Ultra CLX style uh, magazine. It takes 12 shots in 177 and 22. So a rotary magazine really is a nice magazine and you get two of them with the R12 and it features a, uh, a countdown mechanism so it goes from 12 down to 1 so you can see how many shots you've got left and we'll show you the magazine in close-up detail in just a second or two. Now one of the key aspects and it's not one of the most exciting ones visually but one of the key aspects of this rifle is that this section up here the main block is made from one piece of metal. Now a lot of rifles um, will rely on several pieces of metal being machined separately and then joined together up here um, to make the, the main block. Now, you know, that's fine, but obviously the more joins you have, the more reliance you have on seals um, and the more potential leak points there are. So the fact that there are no seals, no joints in this, it's one piece, massively reduces the, uh, the potential for leaks. 
and it's also just a more efficient way of, of, of handling the air. Now, um, housed within here is the new regulator. Um, now, some people have said that uh, I've had issues with BSA R10 regulators in the past. I'll be honest, I've got two R10s and I've never had an issue, but I know some people do. So they will be pleased to know that this is a completely new design regulator made in-house by BSA. And as I said before, it was subject to a 100,000 continuous shots test um, to really make sure that it, that it does the business. Now, at the front of the stock here, you have more of this lovely um, fishtail checkering in, in another couple of panels. And then you have a, this darker rosewood effect or rosewood piece here with another light brown uh, band around it, which really finishes off the rifle and kind of gives it that almost sort of little sort of kind of schnabel kind of finish um, to help it flow into the, the bottle. Now the bottle is an aluminium bottle. Um, it takes, it's 280 cc's and it takes a 230 bar fill. And I understand from BSA that as an aftermarket um, accessory or, or, or option, you can get a 400 mil, a 400 cc uh, bottle um, instead. And the bottle is also removable, obviously. Now the barrel, as you might expect, the barrel is a cold hammer forged barrel. Um, BSA world renowned for its barrels and yeah, cold hammer forged barrel. Now it's obviously uh, completely uh, shrouded, fully shrouded and finished off with the silencer as well. And the silencer comes with the rifle. Now, um, because this has the BSA CCS system or customer configurable shroud system, you can choose to remove the shroud. Um, simply unscrews, take the shroud off, then you can reattach the silencer to the naked barrel. And they give you a couple of spaces and what have you to neaten things up and what have you. Uh, but it basically means that if you want the aesthetic of that naked barrel, then you can do that. And also, if you're going to be using um, a scope with a very large objective lens, you can do so and still get low down um, to the barrel without going you know, significantly higher with your mounts. Um, now, that's about all of it, other than to say that you have the, uh, the fill pressure gauge underneath here. And going around it is like a magnetic um, uh, cap that, will, uh, that protects the fill port. And what we'll do, we'll show you how to fill the rifle with air and deal with that. Then we'll talk about the magazine as well. Um, and then we'll go down, the, the, go down one of my uh, permissions and give it a bit of a shoot. So you get two of these magazines with the R12 and they're really, really well made. They're made of metal, they're not plastic. Very, very solid. And as you can see here, they have this, uh, this counter in them. And obviously when the magazine is full, let me take that around, it will show you that you've got 12 shots left and then you go down 11, 10, all the way down to one shot. Now to load it, it's very simple. Um, although this center part is sprung, you don't have to pre-load it. Um, all you need to do is just push a pellet into that first hole, rotate the drum round and just hold it under tension with your finger, put a second pellet in, and then just keep repeating and doing the same. Now, the, the drum will only spin back to the last pellet that you put in, so you know, it's not going to go all the way back to the beginning, so if you do lose a grip, it will just go back to your last pellet. But just keep loading those in and turning them around. Obviously you want to make sure that they go right down into the, the chamber before you rotate the drum. You don't want to sort of crush the end of the pellet off. But just keep popping them in. Like 
like so. Last one. And that's 12. So that's a fully loaded magazine showing you 12 on that shot counter there. And what we do now is we'll show you how to put it into the breech. Now inserting the magazine into the breech is very, very simple. First thing to note is that unlike the R10 and the R10 SE, there's no separate catch up here for uh, securing the magazine. Uh, you know, before you'd have to push it forward to take the magazine out, push it back again to lock the magazine in. None of that whatsoever on the R12 CLX Pro. Now what I've done is I've taken all the pellets out of this magazine to make it safe. And to insert it, what you want to do first of all is make sure the rifle, the safety catch is on, because obviously once the magazine is inside, your rifle is going to be in a live state. Then just pull back the side lever as far as it will go. And then with that counter facing back towards you as you look down the rifle and, and with it on the left hand side, you just want to push the magazine in as far as it will go till it clicks and then return the side lever and you're good to go. Now this is a nice little feature on the R12 CLX Pro. Underneath here, underneath the, the forend, you can see the, 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 the fill pressure guide. There's no separate gauge to show you the regulator pressure, just this one gauge here to show you the overall fill pressure in your bottle. And the port for filling it is just underneath here. And this little black section here is magnetic. So you just pull that off, see the magnets just down there, and then take your fill probe which just pushes into the front there into that port there in front of the gauge obviously attach your airline to that then you want to give the rifle a 230 bar fill bleed off the light the air in your airline remove the probe and then just simply put that cap back on again well there you have it that's a quick rundown on the BSA R12 CLX Pro Next stage is to take it down to one of my permissions, put it over the chronograph and see how accurate it is. So I've popped down to one of my permissions to give the new BSA R12 CLX Pro a bit of a shoot. And as usual, I set a target out to 30 meters and I'm using Air Arms Diablo field pellets. Uh, this is a 2.2 caliber, so they're 5.52 millimeter size. So let's see when we get on. Well, that looked good from here. Um, a real one hole group that, but we're going to have a look and see it in close up. Well, that's not bad at all. That's a, uh, what a fingernail size at 30 meters, uh, 12 shots. Diablo, Air Arms Diablo Phil, 5.52 pellet size. Um, yeah, wow. Um, there's a slight cross breeze here from left to right in the field and I was sitting on the back of my truck but um, you've got to be pleased with that well that's our first look at the new BSA R12 CLX Pro 
and I've already fallen in love with this rifle. It is just a great, great thing. It really is, you know, unmistakably a BSA thanks to this beautiful stock. Um, and yet it has, you know, the enhancements of this cheek piece, the shoulder pad, all that kind of good stuff. Um, now it may look like an R10 or an R10TH, um, and that's no bad thing because they're both fantastic looking rifles, but it's only skin deep because underneath this, you know, 99% of it is new. You know, you've got this new regulator, new magazine system, uh, new safety catch as well. You've got this side lever action, mono block construction as well. So an awful lot of new um, components into this rifle that make this a standout, standalone rifle. Now I had this on the chronograph. It was a very, very consistent 11.5 foot pounds and over a 30 shot string only deviated by about seven or eight feet per second, which is really, really good. And priced at 1200 and something pounds, you know, this is gonna be a really competitive new market entrant. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please hit the, the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check out our website as well, alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching. To celebrate our 100th video and also to commemorate the launch of the BSA R12 CLX Pro, we have three BSA rifle bags to give away. Now entry is free and it's really simple. All you need to do is send us an email to hello at alphamilitaria.com or go to our Discord channel. There's a competition page there. Details are down below. And tell us what BSA stands for. And you could win one of these three excellent rifle bags. Good luck.